Welcome back to If You Don't Know, Now You Know, a Moton Museum podcast talking about different topics. The last episode was on desegregation versus integration. You can find that if you scroll down in the feed. My name is Irene Thornton, and I'm the intern for education and outreach here at Moton. Today, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we're going to be talking about a woman who was extremely influential in the success of the civil rights movement. Septima Clark was born in 1898 to a formerly enslaved man and a working laundry woman. She grew up in a heavily segregated Charleston, South Carolina. After graduating from Avery Normal School, Clark decided that she wanted to be a teacher. Upon passing her exam, she looked to teach at the Charleston Public Schools. However, due to the Jim Crow laws at the time, black people were not permitted to teach in the same school system as white people. Clark moved to Johns Island to teach for the black community there. John's Island is where she developed her profound teaching style that was responsible for a lot of the success in the civil rights movement, frankly. Like many schools for black children at the time, the one on John's Island was extremely underfunded and dealt with less than ideal conditions. However, Clark continued to work to give the students the best that she could offer. Meanwhile, she was also advocating for the state to integrate the public school teachers, a petition which she was later successful with. Clark continued to teach youth students during the day. She eventually moved to Columbia, South Carolina to obtain her bachelor's degree from Benedict College. She later moved back to Charleston and became a member of the Charleston branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Peoples, the NAACP. Together, the NAACP and Clark filed a lawsuit that demanded pay equality for black and white teachers in South Carolina. The city council and state legislature took strong notice of her role in the lawsuit, and needless to say, they were not very pleased about what was going on. So, in response, South Carolina passed an ordinance denying city and state employees the opportunity to be members of civil rights organizations such as the NAACP. Clark easily, and you know, they gave her the option, Clark easily could have hid or given up her membership with the NAACP, but she refused, and so she lost her job as a teacher in the mid-1950s. However, she had already been teaching part-time at the Highlander Folk School. This education center in southeastern Tennessee was visited by many civil rights advocates, including Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Eleanor Roosevelt. Clark used the education method that she developed on John's Island to teach adult literacy and citizenship. She believed that when you give someone the ability and skills to read and write, then you can better teach them the way to advocate for themselves, thus giving them the power to fight back against segregation and other injustices. Now, able to read and write, the black adults that attended the Highlander Folk School could pass the literacy tests required to vote. The citizenship school model that she pioneered at Highlander Folk School took off and provided the energy much needed for the civil rights movement. Dr. King gave Clark the name of Queen Mother of the Civil Rights Movement. Eventually, Clark went on to become a training supervisor for teachers in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which was founded by Dr. King in 1957. Clark continued to advocate for civil rights and education in South Carolina and the United States for the rest of her life. In the mid-1970s, she was elected to the Charleston City School Board, and shortly after, the governor of South Carolina declared that she was wrongfully let go from her teaching position and reinstated her pension. In 1979, Jimmy Carter presented her the Living Legacy Award, one of the highest civilian honors in the United States. Septima Clark's granddaughter, Yvonne Clark, said of her, quote, I think her most important accomplishment is not so much what she did while alive, but what she instilled in the many people she came in contact with during her lifetime, end quote. Additionally, Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina said, quote, she probably had the biggest heart of anybody I ever met, end quote. So there you go. If you don't know, now you know. Septima Clark queen mother of the civil rights movement for more resources you can check out the national park service the king institute at stanford university or the college of charleston library
That wraps up this episode. If you don't know, now you know. If you have any topics that you'd like us to cover, you can reach us at info at moatmuseum.org or DM us on social media. See y'all soon. Bye-bye.